that is a heavy, heavy sound in the background there. It was haunting, haunting. It would be good to put in the headphones and walk through the woods <laughs> late at night in a foggy night. Welcome, everybody. Lewis here, Rope It Up TV, live from East Philadelphia, Sir. just across the uh, river from uh, Central Philadelphia, Fabian Brown. Nice to see you, Lewis. How long has it been <laughs> since we met? <laughs> Inside joke, right? Uh, Inside joke from a lost episode. All right, it is May 30th. It's finally warm uh, here in East Philly, and we are we are loving it. Uh, I'm going to run down the tracks real fast, right on. what we're going to play to. This is a little bit different, but I want people to know what's coming up. Okay. Um, we have a couple of uh, unreleased things in here. Uh, yep, two tracks unreleased from Matt Cappy and uh, Trevor Lawrence Jr., but before that, we're, we, uh, we're hearing right now Synesthesia from Jesus on the Main Line, and then uh, 19 Southbound from Jim Stevens' Full Tilt Boogie Band, featuring Kenyon Lanier on vocals, Long Gone, featuring Adrian Houlet, and Mark Letiri, and that nice. comes out of Dallas, Texas. That's uh, Sean Martin's Seven Summers record. Nice. New track, uh, out for instant gratification if you buy the album on iTunes, and I think it might be up on SoundCloud, but it's Church and State from Matt Cappy's upcoming record of the same name, featuring Chill Moody. Chill Moody. Do you know... Philly guy. Got any history? Philly guy, right? Philly West guy. Philly. West Philly. Yeah. Or, yeah, West Philly. He mentions North. West Philly in the song, yeah. And I gotta say, on this record, the Matt Cappy Church and State record... Worldwide, yes. track number one is called... It's called East Philly, baby. East Philly, a.k.a. 856. <laughs> All right, so we got that. I'm going to pull this back up. This, is, uh, this song changes a bit. some of the just grand vision and, and complexity of Andrew Neasley's compositions, you know, he's, there's a lot going on in his head. Did I, did I tell uh, you what uh, I didn't tell you? Andrew has a lot of creative ideas. Uh, yeah? I'll have to tell you off air, but it's a, I think it's a good one. I don't want to put it in here. You told him yes, right? Let's do it. I, did, I, did, I told him that you need to loop Lewis in with this one because it's a, it's a good idea. Let's do it. I'll leave it at that. All right, after that, we've got a uh, new... Well, really, there's a new track on the Trevor Lawrence Jr. record called Car Vibe. Yes. Which is going to premiere somewhere. Mm -hmm. But we took... There's a reprise on this record, uh, which if you're below a certain age, wouldn't remember. We had that discussion today with an intern. Yes. Uh, you know, they used to just drop a little piece of a track somewhere in the middle of the album. Uh, it just kind of set you back to the beginning and kept the mood and reinforced the concept that this was an album, you know, not just a collection of songs. Then we've got a, uh, an, this is an unreleased, but it was only on the DVD for Snarky Puppy Family Dinner, Volume 1. Okay. Um, a track from the great Tony Cher. Uh, it was a bonus track. We'll, we'll play it tonight. And, uh... If you're a member of the Robodo Collectors Club, you've got this sitting in your collection somewhere. And then we follow up with a track from the Harlem Experiment uh, at the end here from James Hunter. I got a question. Shoot. Robodo Collectors Club, what's that about? Where do I go? What's the, what's the vibe? Robodo Collectors Club, limited time. Okay. Uh, group of uh, up to 100 only. Uh, core fans, people who want to get every record that we put out. Nice. For a hundred dollars a year. <laughs> yeah. I good. think there are thirty slots left. Okay. And then we're then we're done. Off the table. Then we're done. This cool. is the only chance that you get to do it. With the link below. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask. Unlike uh, you know, we're not Wawa. We're not McDonald's. No. I'm gonna drive through at three a.m. just because that's when you're comfortable. Okay. Got to jump on it. And get it now. Let's hear this intro. Mm -hmm. 
you don't. Much more tragic than it's for all. Isis civilization. So much fear inside of you. Your pain and past, they collide. So much ruin a perfect life. As I caught that night, I found that to me. Classic, classic vibe there. Huh. Jimmy Stevens, Full Tilt Boogie Band with Kenyon Lanier. So we're going to talk about some classic things. I know you got more questions for me, but I'm going to ramble here for a second. So, Do you know what this is? Um, I just learned what that was. I was out uh, at a record store. Uh, my son asked me if we could go to a record store that he had discovered in South Philadelphia called Sit and Spin. And they specialize in punk and metal. And uh, we went down to South Philly. Uh, I was pleased to find some great uh, album covers. It was interesting. Most times everybody focuses just on the, the vinyl. But if you've got a collection from the past that you play. Right. And I don't recommend not playing your records. <laughs> uh, the covers are shot. They, you know, the spines just, just break up. So they had, for a reasonable price, some pristine covers and not pristine vinyl. Hmm. So I bought uh, the band, the basement tapes, Bob Dylan, the band, the basement yeah. tapes, and Bob Dylan, Before the Flood, for the covers. And I slipped the, so swapped out the discs, swapped it. out the LPs, yeah. But this was there, and this is something that we used to use. It's a good idea. Back in my time. Uh, <laughs> You had a little, this one's from uh, Fidelitone in the UK. It's got a little uh, purifier fluid, and you just sprinkle that on there. And then when you put your record on the turntable, because, you know, that's static. That, that pop and hiss is what everybody was complaining about. But, you know, there were ways to deal with it without throwing away an entire industry and wow. putting up CDs. But I was happy to find one of those, and we're always happy to have some nice old things here in the Rope It Up store. Have we used that yet? I have used it, yeah. Does a good job. Just sort of clears out anything that's sitting on the disc. Dust, you know. Um, I got some questions, Mr. Lewis Marks. Talk to me. I got some questions. Um, we are in some serious heavy rotation coming up. So um, one of the things I want to talk about or want to ask you about is, you know, who's coming up. But before all of that, you went to New York City. Uh, earlier this week. Monday night. Monday yep. night. Yep. Uh, saw Mr. Eddie Palmieri. Eddie Palmieri with uh, Donald Harrison Jr., uh, Christian Scott's uncle. That's um, crazy. At Sabrosa. Okay. Cool little spot. It was a little strange. It's the first time I've been there, and I've been informed that it, that this the only this is only because it was Fleet Week, but like right next door, right, was the outdoor smoking area for a club, and it's weird because I got there at like five thirty six o'clock. So I'm like, what? Well, this club is bumping, and there's like a a, a host of dudes, right, <laughs> uh, with tattoos and like vests. Navy guys. It was the West Village. Yeah, it was all. Like, it. it was got like it, in it. the Navy, <laughs> right, right there. <laughs> as we're you know we're all trying to get into the thing, and I was like, well, this this is a little bit of culture clash right now because we got like, uh, you know, forty to to. 60 some year old uh, Puerto Rican families coming in and, right you know jazz heads <laughs> and there's this like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, I thought they should just put a tattoo place right in between because you can't get into that other place without a tattoo apparently that's the deal yeah no, no. gotta have a tattoo how was the performance how was Eddie amazing of course absolutely amazing we recorded it 
uh, and we'll have that oh, in the sign archives. It. That's right, sign that's it was right. There. multi-track recording. We had a little problem with uh, the fire alarm went off like during the second set a couple times, but it was fun sitting and chatting with. Uh, I just want to acknowledge here Adrian Hule uh, and uh, Sean Martin, Mark Latier. And you know, it's funny that we're doing a show about music and playing these great tracks, and you can't hear them because we're talking or I'm talking most of the time. But the point is, go grab the track and listen to it. It'll sound much better without me. I remember so. someone, someone commented on on one of these episodes. What's that track? What's that song? You know, so people are they're digging it. For sure. Well, what we're gonna do? We're gonna put the songs, and we'll put the songs in playlists right right behind it. We'll put them up on SoundCloud. Um, so people can just listen to what, you know, I'm going to just call the playlist for Open Up TV episode 17? Are we 17? 17? I had a great time meeting Donald Harrison. Um, really interesting character. Told some great stories about being in a hotel room in Minnesota back in the day and accidentally put the stopper in the sink and it overflowed and then the police showed up and... It was, a, it was a, they were going to, you know, yeah. and he told them, uh, what you're about to do, I want you to think about it, because it's all on you, so make your choice. What? And walked away, yeah. Yeah, really interesting and wise, uh, oh, man, you know, it was, it's, it's fascinating, you know. That's how a Christian gets it from. You know what's really funny? You know, the, the completely different characters. Completely, I you know, you'd expect them to be somewhat similar, I guess, because they're in the family. But right. I'm not like any of my bros, so you know, <laughs> my kids will say the same thing. <laughs> they're just like, I think you underestimate how much we talk to each other, kind of thing. Like, you know, but uh, no, different. And it's funny how, I mean, when you're younger, you see the old cats and you have a sense. You're like, this is important. This guy probably has something wise to say. What's it about? But you're not really ready to hear it. And you get a little older, and you're. You know, when I guess for me, I got into my 50s, and I was like, well, I need to pay attention to the people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, because... They're, they're saying something. And there's also this generational, not generational, but uh, historical thing where they lived through a time that we just would never... I would hardly understand. I have a sense of it. But now, if you grew up in the 90s, the O's... Your connection with the jazz guys, the, per, the post-war era, not existent. It's a whole different thing. Trains, hobos, right. like you know, the invention of instruments. Those. That's all just a kind of different world. So history book stuff. Yeah. Um, but I gotta say, like, and along those lines, my drive up. Uh, I listened to. I don't know the call letters for this station, but it's 89.9 in North Jersey. A guy by the name of, I may have this wrong, Phil Schapp, I think, was the DJ. And he played about an hour to an hour and a half of Fletcher Henderson, and, you know, on vinyl. And you could hear just, it's just, I had to turn it off every now and then to make sure that my car wasn't, like, you know, rattling or something. Because there's that much static on the on the vinyl. Um, but I learned so much about an era that was before me. Cruising you know, on the way up. Fascinating. So yeah, I mean, I think I think my experience meeting, uh, hanging with Mr. Palmieri a little bit, and meeting Donald Harrison and, and the other cats, um, Nicky Marrero. Yeah. Ooh. Like read, if you're a drummer, he was drumming. Right. So he was on drums that night. Yeah, I, so I got an email from Eddie Jr. The, the lineup had changed. Someone. Someone wasn't able to make it. So th- these, this is how talented these guys are. So they're, you know, they're, they're set on playing their instrument, but just like that, someone couldn't make it. So the whole band changed their lineup. They just shifted to the, to the right of yeah. their instruments. We just did it. <laughs> just play the show. Well, little Johnny was in the same was in the same spot. He's a great cat. I love that guy. Um, but yeah, Nicky Marrero. There's, you know, there's an edge. There's like a crazy edge that they have. I told you earlier today that. It, Later, I went to the Village Vanguard and saw the big band there. Right. And... Different band. Great cats, great stuff, but they know exactly what what they're, what they're doing. There's, no, there's, there's nothing reckless about it. And when you're at an Eddie Palmieri show... You don't know what you're going to get. You just don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's not... 
No, no, it's not. It's the, the content. Is, they are. It is the songs, and they did like uh, from Sabaduria. They did uh, the Uprising, the New Orleans yeah. show, and and half the people in the audience knew the the, the, the chants that are on the back of that New Orleans chants, and people That's were shouting awesome. it out. But so you know the song, everything sounds. You know it sounds right, but just like at any given moment when a guy's drumming. And he, it feels like he trips or something, and then he's that you know, like there's a, there's an emotion in it, and there's a there's a rawness that uh, it's indescribable, really. I, it's it's hard for me to to even describe it, but there's it's it just feels a little fucking dangerous, you know, like I do, like like he's human and he could trip, but he'll pick it up. He's got it, you know, he got it. But I'm, I'm, you know, it's the old. I meant to do that, you know. I meant to do that, you know. You can pull that off, and there's, and and, who knows if it's rehearsed and, I don't know if it is, <laughs> you know, if they planned it that way. But they, do, they haven't lost that. They understand that that's an important element of the music. Right now, Church and State, Mr. Matt Cappy. Matt Cappy. Here East comes Philly the breakdown. native. The tough breakdown. Talk about tone. Tuba Gooding Jr., one of the <laughs> best artist names ever. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, there's something about Matt Cappy. It's like every time I hear that trumpet, I know it's Matt Cappy. There's just no doubt about it. But I was really interested to hear what he had. And this record is, is fascinating to me. He doesn't... Um, seemed to arrange the band behind him. He seems to dance in and out of whatever, whatever the and it's I mean it's his composition, his songs, compositions, you know, and he just kind of fit in, moves in and out um, with a little bit of sound, but it doesn't sound like he's just like deliberately complimenting them either. Like, no. like he, he's he's really obviously there. By not being up front. Right. He, he's not saying, hey, I'm a trumpet player. Listen to me scream throughout the whole entire album. Right. He picks his points and his spots within each track mm-hmm. and says, hey, this is my turn. But what he wrote behind everything was just this really well done. And it's like we were talking. It's funny because it's like a, a full meal. It's a it's a it's a it's an album and it shows oh, his the world range. isn't ready. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be a challenge, you know. <laughs> who's the Who's the the opera singer? Oh my goodness, you're putting me on Stephen, the spot. Stephen, um, with a PH. Yeah. Stephen Costello, right? And Marcia Ambrosius is on the record. So there's the you know there's the there's the Philly funky thing. There's more elaborate composition, jazz, Latin, yep, kind of vibe. And then it, then there's opera. He, uh, and and heavy gospel, Amazing yep. Grace from Marsha. He pulls all those genres together in an album, and it. Lewis it's kind of like a day, you know, like a day in the life or a year in the life of of, of Mac Happy. Yeah. Like I did this stuff, and <laughs> here's the my chronicle of it. You know. Yeah. It's really amazing. It's beautiful. That's coming out. When's his uh, CD release party's coming soon? Uh, June eighth, next uh, Thursday night. Right in uh, it's twenty three hundred Swanson, is it? Yep, twenty three hundred Swanson Street at the twenty three hundred Arena Club. We're we gonna be out there with a the camera. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm going. We'll bring a camera. Why not? Yeah, let's go. Let's go do a show. I love it. So, I love it. So here is one of my favorite moments from Snarky Puppy Family Dinner Volume One. <laughs> Tony Cher, 
plays with everybody, world renowned guitarist uh, and bass player, I believe. Um, on Rope It Up uh, via the band Sex Mob with Steven Bernstein, but returned again. I'll stop you here. He's a funny guy, too. Right here he's playing slide, but on an individual string at a time, from what I understand. If you watch the video, you'll catch it. So you said this is a bonus track? Yeah, there were eight tracks on the album and eight on the DVD, and the DVD tracks were never released. Nice. And they really, they still haven't been released. We've just kind of snuck them in as a little special gift for the... Uh, How many bonus tracks that's not released? Eight, I believe. Whoa, what's an album? Yep. Here we go. One thing, go ahead, go economy ahead. of words and poetry, when he says smoke that last one down to the little, everybody has an image in their head, no matter where you are in the world, if you, you know, smoke that last one down to the little, and you just like, it says so much with just a few words, which is, uh. Tony's known for a lot of things and maybe not as much as songwriting but for me that's the thing I love it go yeah. I mean as if I have real answers for you well no we talked about a lot already um, but just trying to be relevant what's going on in Rope It Up right now there's a lot of things uh, it's moving really really fast and um, I'm excited mm. about a lot of stuff but recently there's been some some things uh, in you know tra- what I'll call traditional media uh-huh. um uh, the Christian Scott interview in GQ. Uh, you know, the, I didn't read that yet. Oh my goodness! I saw the images today. But oh I, yeah. my goodness! I mean, I scanned through. I saw like he covered certain points. Yeah, it's heavy, right? It, it's 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 Christian, is what right. it is, and right. it's it's this really well articulated. And I just read it today. Um, just came out today. Just came out today. Read it right before mm-hmm. the show. So you got that. You got uh, you know Rolling Stone with with the poly seeds. Um, you know, my question is though on those articles and. What, what's your take? You know, how... How do I want to say this? How relevant, how important does traditional media play a role in in today, you know, with all this stuff and social media and all this, all this stuff, you know? What, do you, what are your thoughts around traditional <laughs> media and its importance with, with artists and, you know... Right, right. You know where I'm going with this. I do, I do. I, you know, we're, we're at that point you know, somebody said to me, like, nobody wants a Grammy until they're nominated, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, ev- that's true. he didn't mean nobody, but he meant, like, everybody acts like it's not a big deal. It's a big and then they're nominated, and they're like, oh, I have to have that, right? <laughs> so we're at this point where we have said that traditional media is not as important as it used to be. Uh, we've complained incessantly about how, you know, the, the jazz police or, yeah. you know, reviewers are critical of anything outside a certain range and you know it's all been very convenient in a lot of ways to the kind of music that we have so we're we're at the point where like now what 
right? Are we going to embrace uh, traditional media because it's powerful? Sure. I mean, well, that's but it, but but it's only powerful to a certain extent, right? So there's a lot of shine and, and lust, you know, luster that goes with it. Um, we premiered something. We premiered the, premiered the Poly Seeds on Rolling Stone. Right. And then it got picked up by a bunch of other outlets. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> and then the next thing you know, there's just about a million uh, listens on SoundCloud. So it has power to right. reach people. So I don't... That. How many listens? I don't think that... Um, I don't think that we can ignore that. Okay. Power. But... The question is, what's the content? You know, the, the fortunate part about both Christian Scott's thing in Rolling Stone and uh, and Terrace Martin's piece in Rolling Stone is that they were written by uh, some very informed writers. Right. Uh, True. Our materials were presented in a way that prepaved what we really felt most strongly about talking about and the artists are incredibly articulate yep uh, each in completely different styles <clears throat> so I think when that all comes together when you have a publication who has the who has the listeners the readers okay if you will right and then the content is good because the person writing is really on it and then the artist is articulate uh, okay and and also and the label or the, and the publicist are are talking to the artist and you know and making sure that it's not a coaching thing it's just sort of like what do we want to say here you know because if you don't then you walk right into a media mill and it's like yeah. bang so and so's doing this and everybody copies and, and you don't so so what we discovered is that if you put some quality content into that and you have the wonderful opportunity to be able to be covered by like Rolling Stone or whoever somebody who has that many people and the writer's good that you can actually you know bring out some really good stuff that reaches people and and sticks a little bit that people actually get something out of it rather than just another blog post that, that oh, disappears man. so I, I'm not convinced I think that these publications as much as I'm heeding it right about how to present to these publications mainstream media they need to be very much in tune to what people want to hear and I think mm. that people actually want to hear more informed uh, dialogue about music and artists. You know, the pu- the public is not stupid. I'll tell you so, what. So, there it is. That that's a, a great response. And when you do get a chance to read that that article in, in GQ with Christian, it really does speak a lot. It's not just about the album. It's it's, it's about him as a person because that's a story. Oh my goodness. Yep. But well well written though. We're taking a trip back to the Harlem Experiment. We're gonna take this out with this. We did this record. When I first came on board, first record I was ever involved with, 